Okay, so um, I vote we travel by DeLorean today. It's been a little while. All right, so here we go back to 1740-ish. While we're driving in, oh. there we go. All right, uh, Roulette's here. Yes. Um, so is Oscar, so is Moni. Corey isn't. Um, Ian Cormack. Yes. No, I'm okay. No, no, but Ian Marshall is, is over there. Yay. All right. Is Briggsy here? George? No. Uh, Carter Hood is right there. Case is in the back. Uh, Ethan's there. Uh, Vanessa. Uh, and Valentino. There we go. Okay. Oh, number one. Just in time. All right. So there's uh, a couple things I want to tell you about chapter eight. We'll do a little something there, and then we'll go on. So, um, we'll hear more of these as we get into the classical period, but just wanted to tell you what a passion is. So this is a dramatic work for the stage, specifically based on Jesus' story in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Um, there we go. Nailed it. Um, so these can range in length. Um, uh, J Money Box is... Um, is two and a half hours long. There's some non-biblical commentary factored in, um, but that's basically the idea of passions. We will come across those as we get further along. Um, before we go on, um, a lot of the music we've encountered in the Baroque period so far is, after all, for stage. And so I wanted to kind of get some modern perspectives on you know, whether on mu musical uh, stage works with music that have dialogue that don't because there's going to be a back and forth about that as time goes on. Um, so let's see. Uh, if I can get these two rows in your notebooks uh, real quick, you're all going to make these two uh, kind of make a little chart in your Okay, so if you guys would do stage music works, so that's that's operas, musicals, every, everything, anything for the stage with dialogue, if you can look up five, and I'll collect those. We'll make them into into a list. We might do more than five if we get carried away, you know. Um, okay, and if these two rows, if you guys would look up sung through stage works or or stage uh, music works without music, however you want to Google that. Individually, okay. um, we are stronger together. Okay, well, let's see if we can get some brainstorming going there. I found a Wikipedia there. list of fully sung through musicals. What's that? I found a Wikipedia list of fully sung through musicals. Okay, give me one. Art Thief Musical. Art Thief? Les Miserables. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What are some examples of? I'll say they're in alphabetical order, not list of popularity, so I'll just come up first. Yeah, yeah, fair, fair enough. Cats. Cats, absolutely. 
the Ten Commandments? Oh yeah, right, right. Why is it R given us a Shrek? Oh wait, no, that's, that's not, not a stage for never mind. I mean there is a Shrek. Yeah, yeah. There's 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 yeah. There's um, Evita. Yeah. Evita. And then the longest running one in New York. And there is a Jesus Christ superstar. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what is the longest running one? Like West Side Story. Um, yeah. Is Beauty and the Beast one? Hey. Okay. We're getting what somewhere. about um, Greece? Would Greece be a yeah? Greece. Cinderella. Other than West Side Story or any of those stage players? <laughs> well, I don't know. All, all of them have been. But often they were. They were. There. Sometimes it's a movie and then a musical, and then sometimes it's the other way around. Shrek was a musical first, then it was a stage play. Movie first. Uh, yeah, movie first, and then two different uh, versions of this stage play. Uh, Jesus. <laughs> I should put superstar. Otherwise, yes. it just looks like I am exclaiming, "Jesus Christ!" Oh, okay. Um, I'm I'm surprised uh, that the other one hasn't come up. Oh, Phantom of the Opera. Oh, Phantom. Oh, that's right, Phantom of the Opera. That's very famous. Now, tellingly, we'll get to this uh, when we talk about musicals in the 20th century. When we get to the chapters in the 30s, um, Cats, Evita, Jesus Christ Superstar, and Phantom of the Opera all have music by the same composer, a man named Andrew Lloyd Webber. Uh, we'll come back to him again when we get there. You yeah. must be pretty good. What's up? You must be pretty good. It's not for me. <laughs> uh, but but millions of people just disagree with me. Um, so yeah, West Side Story, Beauty and the Beast, Shrek, Grease, Cinderella, these are all, are all good. Wicked could be in there. What uh, about, um, what about, I don't know if it's, I think it's a stage music. What about like um, sound music? Sound music, yeah. Mary Poppins, yeah, what, what you got? Call me crazy, but like, is for my one, my category, um, high school musical? Yeah. Because it's a musical? With words? No, that's the first like, thing, like, you have to think of. Right, I mean, like, it's in the name. I wasn't thinking any movies because it's a stage work. Yeah. And, that, and yeah, but of course, by this point, there's touring say, productions of it, so it's been made into, because it's Disney, so it means, wait, we could make money by doing it over here, too? Okay, let's do that. The Lion King musical. <laughs> Well, and that was, wait, no, 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 it was the movie first, and then yeah. the never-ending, long-running. So, yeah, the, and this is a good list, um, and like I said, as we go through the class, classical period, the romantic period, and then into the 20th century, there will be a back and forth at how much dialogue and how much recitative there is um, in these, you know, and then there will be different versions, because like all of these, um, Les Mis, Cats, Evita, Jesus Christ, Superstar, Fan of the Opera, are kind of like this almost like pop music recitative version. So that's, it, um, which, you know, some people didn't think was gonna work, and it did, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, yeah, I, um, this is a good list, but um, this will kind of, kind of get us started. Okay, so now we've been talking about um, music for, um, for the stage with cantatas, oratorios, passions, um, and uh, opera, we're gonna shift gears and talk about uh, piano music in the Baroque period. There's a couple of different things. Oh, uh, in your books, if you would look at page 90, page 90, Piano music, it falls into a couple of different categories. I will never ask you to distinguish these on a test um, just by hearing them, and you'll understand why when we look. Um, so these are three of the varieties, uh, and then there's another one that we're going to talk about in larger detail in just a minute. Um, so there's toccatas, fantasias, preludes. Uh, as it says on page 90 there, um, preludes. Are we turning in this list, you said, at the end of the term? Uh, no, you'll turn it in when I collect your notebooks at the midterm. Okay. Oops. Oh. Okay. I mean, if you want to turn in your notebook. If, if you don't, then I won't collect it. By the way, but not that 
including the activities that we did, whatever, before, like the activities of the SpongeBob, blah, 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 blah. Those, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Feels and provides. No, he, well, he didn't because he didn't get the paper. Oh, crap. I think that's me. I think that's going away. Okay, so preludes, they feel improvised, and per the title, um, they lead into a larger work. Um, so they're almost like an overture for an instrumental work. As a, so overtures are always, generally, at this time, right before work that has vocals. So preludes kind of serve the same function as an overture for instrumental uh, pieces. Alright. Toccatas which also would be a good word for Beavis to say. Um, Takata! It would be like that. Um, so, uh, Takatas, on the other hand, are um, Toccatas are really um, a piece from the Baroque period where the purpose is to show off the virtuosity of the, uh, the performer. Now, and here's the reason I wouldn't ask you to distinguish between these on a quiz, by hearing them, because Fantasia is very similar, um, at least in the initial idea. Okay, so there's kind of your three. Prelude, feels improvised, leads into a larger work. Toccata is kind of a, a showy piece where there's like going up and down scales, there's trills, um, there's stuff that really is there to show off the virtuosity of the performer. Fantasia, similarly virtuosic, uh, virtuosic, excuse me, the difference is that it feels improvised. Well, that's a hard thing to, to pick up by just hearing it. So, I won't ask you to do that. Oh, what I am going to play for you, and I'm glad we have a video of a person performing it, because I think it's cool to actually watch it being performed, and that is... Um, so, if you know one Toccata, it's this one. If you would, uh, raise your hands when you recognize that you've heard it. I guarantee you'll be in the first three notes. Can I ask a question right fast before you play it? No. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> what is a trill? Oh, good point. Uh, back and forth between two notes like this. Okay. Hmm? Um, is that a good piano impersonation? I did my Amazing. best. Amazing. Here we go, everybody. Um, so we're not going to play all of it. I'll skip around a little bit, but it uh, gives you a good idea of what these kinds of piano uh, keyboard pieces are. Yeah. So Toccata and Fugue in D minor by Bach, uh, by J.S. Bach specifically. That's right.
jump in and point something out so that you can kind of be listening for it as we go. <clears throat> um, you'll notice in this piece there will be a lot of spots where it feels like we're coming to a rest mm -hmm. on a particular chord. The term for that is a cadence. And sometimes, uh, often, those won't be fully realized. Um, should go to another note, but instead we're going to wander off and do sort of a next section. There's going to be a lot of that happening, so listen out for that. That was an example. Take a look. This is why people get master's degrees in organ performance, because it's complicated. He's doing three different things simultaneously. What's up? without playing that, but if you play this, it will trigger that. Jump ahead to the end. See. Jump ahead to the end so you can see kind of what a coda to this would sound like. There's another one of those points, and then but again, and we go off to kind of a new place. What's that? So that's a good example of these kinds of pieces and what they sounded like. Do you see how fast that works? Like, um, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> please don't try and copy this down. So that's, uh, I don't think that will work out very well. Uh, such a quick setting. Okay, so we got a little bit, uh, like a, one of the new genres of keyboard music here. It's what's called a fugue. Um, later on, um, people will attempt, will kind of, not attempt fugues specifically, but will have fugues. Uh, played by multiple instruments, but as it stands here, it's keyboard music. 
So a few It's polyphonic. What does that mean? That means multiple sounds. Multiple. Yeah. Multiple, yeah. multiple sounds, multiple rhythms. Good. Yeah. So what a fugue is, at its basic concept, is it is a melody called the subject that goes through, that appears four times, um, usually going in order, so highest to, to, to lowest. So there will be, um, it will appear in the highest voice or, in, or line, I should say, then the next down, then the next down, the next down. Sometimes people mix and match and go, hmm, 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 hmm. Um, sometimes, mm, 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 mm. but in this version, it's going to be going from top to bottom, as you'll hear. So the melody is called the subject. You'll hear it, and like I said, you'll hear it four times, and then the so that's the subject. The counter subject. And this is based off the same thing, right? Yep. Okay. That's right. Counter subject. Counter subject, kind of as the title implies, is a second melody that's under the subject. So, um, so when the subject appears, usually by itself without anything happening underneath it, this one is kind of a different case of that. The subject appears by itself, and then maybe it starts in the next voice. Well, when the subject finishes in the first line to say it, and, and anything else they keep playing, that's, that's kind of what we would call the counter subject. So you have those two things happening at the same time. Then, so after you get a couple of these, and each one of these fugues is a little different about how it is. There's no, it's not exactly set like when a counter subject begins and when it ends and how much of it and how long it has to be. It's not rigid, which is fine. Um, then, we get episodes. Just kind of recall connecting transitional music material. Uh, sometimes in episodes, you might hear little bits and pieces of the subject, but they'll be backwards or turned upside down or moved from a minor key to a major key. Um, but uh, so all this goes into the first part of a fugue, which is called the exposition. So when you hear the word exposition, what do you uh, what do you think of? So, um, so exposition here is like the plot of the fugue. You got to hear the plot before the rest of the story happens. Should we add that into our notes? Um, yes. For exposition? Yep. Okay. Specifically.
And specifically, how you know the exposition is over is that the subject is played by all four instrumental lines. So when the last one finishes playing it, then we're done. And then we're done with the exposition. And we're on to another thing that we'll talk about later called the development. Yes? Um, I might be completely wrong, but I just had this pop into my head and I was curious. Episode, you said connecting transitional music. So is that like a instrumental part of a song? Yeah, well, I'll, I mean, this whole thing is going to be instrumental. Okay. okay. Um, but, uh, but it's the... It's the transitional stuff where you're not going to hear it and think, oh man, I love that too. Like, it's it's not a melody in itself. It's kind of little bits that get you to the next okay. part. Um, so uh, so if you wanted to relate it to some, uh, something visual, um, think of episodes more like if you were watching a, a, a television show, like the, like the 30 seconds of music that gets you to the next scene. Think of it like that. Okay. So, let me show you, uh, and for those playing the home game, following along, on page 91, uh, it is the little fugue in G minor um, that we're following along there. And happily, we can, we can kind of see it. So, That's the, so that's not the whole subject, but that's the first part of it. Quick question. What we just heard, what's the texture right now? It's not polyphonic yet. What is it now? Modified. 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 Yeah, so there's just one or no. So when you, we'll be able to see it here. I just want you to listen out. So you're going to hear two versions of the subject as they appear. So the first one's going to start out with that ba, ba, ba. Next one, and then you're going to hear another one like that in a little bit. Before that, you'll hear a version of it, an interval down called a fifth. Ba, ba, ba. And then you'll hear that a second time. So that's your four subjects. There's the second. Counter subject stuff happening in the top. Third entrance. Got some episodes happening there, probably. There's the fourth entrance. Episodes at the top. And then there's. So now we're getting into. So this is kind of getting into the development section. Here we're going to hear a lot of episodes, a lot of just sort of transitional stuff. Here. Ba, 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 ba. We hear just the starting bit of the subject, and then it kind of goes off and does some other things. Eventually, we're going to get we're going to get the alto voice, like the playing the subject, then the bass, then the soprano, and then the bass again. So we're in transitional land. 
Yep. And so now it's in a major key. And there's some final Staff is tenor, and the third back staff is bass. Nailed it. Yep, that's it. Um, so, and so, and so, yeah. The, the, um, so, yeah. Everybody, as far as like, you know, if, um, you know, kind of what you're seeing here. Yeah, all the stuff where the the stems are facing upward on this top line, that's the soprano voice or mm -hmm. soprano line, and then all the stuff with stems down, that's the alto. So, if these were being sung, you like that, though. I do want. I would love to hear this song someday and watch people desperately strain for breath to really get it. Um, then you have tenor here, and then you have bass here. Yeah. So. Okay. So here's that last treatment in the in the bass. It's not one of the other three. You're asking like if it's a staccato or prelude. No, no, it, it's it's its own. So it's, it's its own new jam. Okay. Yeah. Um, with two M's. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, I want to do something. Uh, can everybody hold up one finger for me with either hand? Don't care which. Two fingers. Three fingers. Two fingers. Four fingers. Um, okay. Good. All right. Um, so what we're going to do right now is we're going to kind of see how everybody's doing with this. What I would like is, now, the first one will be easy. Just hold up one finger the first time you hear any notes because that'll be the first subject. Okay, I want to hold up each finger as you hear the next entrances. Okay. Are we ready? All right, let's do this. There we go. There's your first subject, you You got it. And there you are. So there's your four subject entrances. Good. Very good. Degrees in uh, in organ performance to be able to. Um, to the, if I'm not mistaken, the organ is, because the organ is it's not like the Jasenia the piano. It's, it's a composure of the piano in, in the keys in in the chords in, in a smaller and and it's just it's more complex than just the piano itself. Absolutely yes yeah and there's you were talking about pulling on all, all the stops. Um, of course, there are stops on the organ, and that's what you were going for, wasn't it? Ah. All right. Um, okay, so uh, another instrumental type, and this gets into starting to do music for uh, larger groups. Sometimes this, um, so you have the Baroque dance suite. So this is this is significant because along with the uh, the dance music that Michael Pretorius wrote that we were talking about in the uh, Renaissance, 
this is really the first appearance of instrumental music with multiple sections and where there are four or five distinct sections. We're only going to see more of this as we get to symphonies and sonatas, that sort of thing. So generally speaking, it's going to be these five things. The Alamon from Germany, the Courant from France, Sarabon from Spain, the Bure from France again, um, and then the Jig from England, and sometimes there can be some, uh, there's a little bit of an Irish inspiration there as well. Um, those preludes we were talking about, sometimes they'll put those on the front of a dance suite, and sometimes uh, there will be a gavotte. I have curiosity, have any of you heard the soundtrack to uh, the musical Hamilton? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, if you've heard a Winter's Ball, um, sort of in the, toward the middle of the first act, um, then there's a little bit of the elements of a gavotte uh, in there, but obviously it's sort of like a hip-hop gavotte, uh, as they called it. Um, so, so that's one pla place to look to kind of hear that. Um, so what I'm going to show you right now is I'll show you a couple of these where you can hear the music and you'll actually get to see people doing the dances, which kind of makes sense so you can really see what it looks like. All right, so here is an Alamont. Um, <laughs> 